Good morning and a warm welcome to the next study in our Lent series at St Margaret's Angmering, the series entitled Journeying with Jesus. Over the past four weeks, we've been looking at events during Jesus' last trip to Jerusalem, as recorded for us in the Gospel of St Luke. And we've now reached that stage when we're just two days away from Jesus' death on the cross at Calvary. So let us pray before we read. We're studying of today's passage. It describes when Judas Iscariot, as one of Jesus' 12 disciples, decided to betray him. But let's just pray before we read that. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to study what happened in the days leading up to your dying on the cross to save us. We thank you for St Luke, who recorded these events so clearly for us, and the freedom we have in this country to study your word, a freedom denied to many of our fellow Christians in other parts of the world, and we do pray for them and their safety. We also thank you for the technology that enables us to meet like this and pray that whatever stage we are at in our Christian lives, you will have a clear message for us today. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, our passage this morning is from Luke's Gospel, it's chapter 22, and it's the first six verses. And the heading is, Judas agrees to betray Jesus. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread, called the Passover, was approaching, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve, and Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. He consented and watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when no crowd was present. Well, one leading American preacher once wrote, the most spectacular sin that has ever been committed in the history of the world is the brutal murder of Jesus Christ, the morally perfect, infinitely worthy, divine Son of God. And probably the most despicable act in the process of this murder was the betrayal of Jesus by one of his closest friends, Judas Iscariot. We read in this passage that it was the time of the Passover. The Passover was certainly a big deal in those days. It was everybody's ambition to make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the feast at least once in their lifetime. There were extensive preparations made for the feast and to accommodate the crowds. Roads were repaved, bridges reinforced, gravestones were whitewashed so pilgrims would see them and avoid accidentally touching them and so-called becoming unclean. Weeks before, the synagogues began teaching about the meaning of the Passover. Yet how ironic that while celebrating the Passover, which was to celebrate their salvation from slavery, at the same time they were plotting to kill the Saviour who brings salvation from slavery and sin, slavery to sin. As we read in our passage, the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus for they were afraid of the people. How ironic. A few people saw Jesus as a Messiah, and most of them saw him as a prophet of God, and they thronged about him to hear his teachings. After Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, large crowds followed him during the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, and we saw that in this series a couple of weeks ago. The efforts of the religious leaders had not stopped him or diminished his popularity, which threatened their positions and their influence. In John's Gospel, in chapter 12, verse 19, we read about the frustration of these leaders. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. So, they plotted to kill both Jesus and Lazarus, but how were they going to do this? They feared that any public arrest would infuriate the people, setting off a riot. Whenever there were feasts held in Jerusalem for pilgrims, Rome would fortify their presence by sending in more soldiers 
to maintain order. A riot would be met with iron-fisted violence and ultimately the religious leaders would be held accountable before the emperor. And in this case, it was Nero, the half-mad Nero. So arresting Jesus publicly was out of the question. But they needed to get rid of him, they said. This is where Judas comes in. When they read that they received some help from this diabolical plan, we read that. Judas, that infamous name will always be linked to betrayal and treachery, won't it? But as we read, Judas went, Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. He consented and watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when no crowd was present. We're not told why Jesus, Judas betrayed Jesus in this way. Uh, maybe it was pure greed. We're told in Matthew's account of this same event that Judas was offered 30 pieces of silver. Um, that was a reasonable amount in those days, but uh, not a huge amount. And the word betrayal was a strong word in those days, and it still is, isn't it? When we read about this event, our immediate reaction is probably to be quite appalled at what Judas did and strongly condemn him for his actions. So let's look again at that word betrayal. What are some synonyms for the word betrayal? Words that can mean the same thing. Uh, I looked a few of those up. Disloyalty, faithlessness, falseness, unfaithfulness. What about some antonyms, words that mean the complete opposite? Faithfulness, devotion, allegiance, loyalty, steadfastness. Well, looking at both those lists of words, synonyms and antonyms for the word betrayal, I would suggest we could all apply the word betrayal to our own relationships with God. I know, it's a strong assumption. I know, but think about it. If we are committed Christians who have accepted God's offer of salvation and grace, we know that we still regularly let him down by what we do, by what we don't do, by what we're thinking. We're regularly betraying him. It's called sinning. But as Christians, we know that God will forgive us through his grace, if we confess our sins. That's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? But if we have not made that personal commitment to follow Christ, I would suggest we're betraying him by not accepting what he did for us by dying on the cross and rising again. These events we will be celebrating in a couple of weeks' time, on Good Friday and Easter Sunday. So, in summary... Let's learn from this story of Judas and his betrayal of Jesus. Yes, what G Judas did was wrong. But we need to learn from this by looking at ourselves and recognising how we too are betraying him. We need to confess our sins. We need to accept his forgiveness and continually seek to increase our faithfulness, devotion and loyalty to our Lord and Saviour. So let us pray, and I suggest the first prayer was a prayer of confession, recognising that we are letting him down, we are betraying him. Say Amen at the end of this with me, please. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And finally, let us join in together with the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, 
the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning and uh, please continue to follow us in our Journeying with Jesus series as we approach the most important time of the Christian year when we celebrate that Jesus died and rose again to save us. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers.